How to plumb a house, the rough end. Now, here in Texas, we call it a rough end. It's an underground rough, where we actually go and dig the dishes, put the pop in, and run it under the slab. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, we've already done a video where we did the underground. What I'm wanting to show you now is what it's like once the concrete's poured. Now, a couple of key things. When I do a rough end, or when I did in the past, I don't do them anymore, but when I did a rough end, I always wanted to be there for the concrete pour. Either me, a journeyman that I trusted, or a very good apprentice that would make sure people did not stand on the plumbing, lean on the plumbing, push it out of the wall, do different things. The reason is, I want these pipes to do two different things. I want them to come up true, plumb, and square. That way when we tie onto them, all the fittings go together perfect, it's aligned properly, it's right there in the wall, right where it's supposed to be. The other thing is that it stays in the wall. So the things that I wanna make sure of are that my pipe comes up true, plumb, and square, and I'll show you in this video why some of them don't, and why I want them directly in the wall. Saving time, saving money, doing things right in the very beginning, not just staking it. And it's really funny because from that last video, I got comments about how they use rebar to stake pipes underground. We've always used conduit. Now, I'm not saying one's better than the other. It's just what we've used and it's worked well. So check this out and do me a favor. If you're a plumber, stay around till the end and let me know what do you think from what you've seen? Would you have done things different or do you like the way that it turned out? Anyway, let me grab my toboggan, let's jump outside, and let's see what this whole thing is all about. Let's go. Rough end plumbing after the concrete's poured. So today I'm gonna show you what a slab looks like after it's been poured for a new home, after the concrete's already in the ground. Now those of y'all that saw the last video, you understand what the plumbing looks like underground. Now what I wanna do is come back and show you what it looks like when things are back to normal. So all the dirt has been filled in here. Remember the city tap? Remember the clean out? This is what it looks like now. Now, one thing I don't really like about it, they didn't stick it off good. It's kind of at an angle. I'm one of these people, I love everything true, plumb, and square, and that is such a big deal to me. We've got the water service over here, still not tied in to the meter or anything. The city hadn't come out and set it. Water service is there and ready. So anyway, let's walk up to the house, check out the double clean out and the valve there, and then let's step up onto the slab. Now, if you're new here, or even if you've been here before and you haven't done it yet, do me a favor. I'm gonna ask you to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any videos that we release. And if you really like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up and share this video with somebody. Make sure you hang around till the end because I'm gonna show you what one of the most important things about doing a rough end and checking the slab is all about. So here we are out on the slab. Remember the two-way clean outs? Here they are. Now, when I say two-way, I actually mean a double clean out because we've got two combinations underground. We know that. Here they are right outside the customer's front door. Now, I like that because if they see them, you know, anything out of sight is out of mind. If their house ever backs up or floods, it could possibly come out and pull the caps off. And if it stopped up in the yard service, it would actually come out in their flower bed. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's a great idea to dump raw sewage in a flower bed. But if I've got a choice is to clean up a flower bed or inside the house because it's ruined carpet or hardwood floors, I'm picking the flower bed every single day. All right, so we're back again. Now, remember when I showed you all this earlier, I told you it's right on the edge of the garage. Well, now I'm in the garage. Now I'm in the front entryway. So really, there's nothing here unless they're gonna put a, a mop sink or something out in the garage. But as narrow and shallow as these garages are, I really don't think that they want a big mop sink sticking out here. It's gonna take place where a car would go. So what I've seen them do is come up, 90 this out like I told you, make this a clean out. So if the main is ever stopped up here in the front of the house, the whole house is stopped up, but they open the clean outs out front and say, look, there's nothing there. The plumber could step into the garage, run a machine through here and clean everything out. So this is that first line we came to where this is probably just a clean out to go into the garage. So here we are at that bathroom. The, the entryway I told you was probably the powder bath. You've got a toilet right here. Here's your vent coming off of it. And I'm assuming if they're gonna come off and put a lavatory or something over here. Now, one thing that's different about plumbing today where we used to run all our water loops under the slab, we would literally loop up to the water heater and then loop around to everything from there. There's no water under the slab here. So what they're doing is they're running every single thing overhead. Now, I would probably wanna put it under the slab. I think I could save labor doing it that way. But putting it in overhead, the only slab leak they have to worry about is from the front valve to the water heater, and that could still happen. So anyway, 
different people do it different ways. That's just the way I look at it. Okay, so remember the line I showed you where it comes over to the ice maker? So the only thing I don't like about this, as you see, it's crooked. Oh no! Our table is broken! Now when I oversaw plumbing jobs, when we had a concrete pour, I always had a journeyman or an experienced apprentice out to stay with it. You wanna make sure no lines get pushed around. If this is pushed out of the wall, it's gonna cause problems. So this is something that could be a big problem later, but right now, hopefully, it's still on the wall. So now here's the kitchen line on the other end of that ice maker's right here. So what we've got is, like I said, now this is an island, so the drain actually runs underneath as we saw earlier, but the water lines can drop down through that sleeve, come over and come up right here. Now you've got water out here. Again, be very careful when doing a rough end because these things get pushed over crooked. They can push you out of the wall. If they get pushed over far enough, it can be really hard to work everything back in. I've actually seen plumbers use torches, try to heat the pipe, bend it and straighten it. I recommend chipping it up, getting it back where it goes and doing the job right. So remember the two lines I told you are probably catching upstairs? This one is probably catching a washing machine. Most homeowners prefer to have their washer and dryer downstairs, so this would catch the drain box. This is probably going upstairs to catch additional plumbing. Now we've got the water line behind us, which makes sense with the garage right there. You build a platform, you can put your water heater right out there. Hopefully, it's far enough over that it is still on the wall. Now, let's head over here to the master bathroom and see what we find there. But remember, this is probably just for upstairs and it's good that it's true square and plumb and get it to where they can plumb everything in upstairs and get it all working right. Now here we are back in the master bathroom. Remember the toilet? Remember the line that I told you is probably for the lavatory? Remember the leak? Oh shit, this is gonna be a problem. Well, I'm hoping that they got that taken care of because that's where we're at now, back in that bathroom. This is probably just gonna catch the lavatory. It's the vent for the toilet, we know that, because that's actually where the flange will go, where the toilet itself is. And then back here behind me, like I told you, what we've got here, we've got a tub and shower in the master bathroom. Then the last line on the house, and I love the idea of putting a clean out on the end of the line. If you're a plumber, do you do that? At the end of the line, do you have a clean out? Is there a clean out outside where literally they can snake in, come through here, go around, and catch almost the entire house. Now there's a few branch lines they may not be able to get to, but by having a clean out at the end of the line, it makes it where they can clean things out without ever going inside the house. I love this for testing purposes, and I love it if there's ever a clog and they need to get it cleaned up. Anyway, if you're a plumber, man, does this look familiar to you? If you're a homeowner, this is what it looks like after the rough is done, after they come put the dirt back in and pour the concrete. What we're waiting for now, we're waiting for studs to come up so we can start the top half. If you're a plumber, do me a favor, leave me a comment in here. Did you see anything that I didn't see? Anything that maybe isn't done right? And if you're a homeowner, have you seen your house when it was like this? Or did you buy a house that was already built? Either way, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below and let me know, what do you think about this? You got the patio in the back, garage in the front, entryway, and a whole lot of plumbing. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.